It's Steve here from the Studio One Soapbox and today we're going to take a look at the stock compressor that comes free with Studio One. Now compression is one of those things that a lot of people get very confused about so I am going to try and keep this extremely basic as I can. Uh, first up here we have the compressor. Um, I have it installed on a little bass track and I'll let you hear it play and see what you think. So if we just take a look at this centre section with our levels are on the left side we have, this is the signal coming into the compressor, the volume level. On the right hand side this is the level going out of the compressor. And up above here is how much compression is going on. As you can see there's 7 dB of compression going on. Uh, in this little graph is the knee related to this control. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, we'll start on the left hand side and the first control we have here is the ratio. Now quite simply the ratio is how much compression is to be applied. Simple as that. So the higher you have this number the more compression will be applied to the signal coming in. The lower the level the less compression you will have. Uh, below that and probably most importantly of all is the threshold. This simply is when the compressor starts to work. So for instance, if I zoom this out and I come over to our main output and I try to find roughly about 18 dB, there we go. Uh, as we can see, our threshold is set at minus 18. So that means that everything, I find 18 again, Everything that comes over the 18 dB will start to be compressed. Simple as that. So the threshold is simply where you want the compressor to start working. Now below that we have the knee control. And that works in conjunction with this little graph here. Um, the higher the knee uh, is the softer or uh, it controls how quickly the compressor grabs the signal. So this would be considered a soft knee, as we can see, a very gentle slope. And the reverse of that is a very hard knee, which would mean the compressor would grab the signal extremely quickly in this setting. Um, as you can see, we've got about 3 dB here, which comes from the bass guitar setting, which are always a great place to start. Um, down below, we have the look ahead on off. Um, this simply means that the compressor is trying to look ahead to see the peaks or the loudness of the signal coming down the line and tries to ready itself and adjust itself uh, to give an overall better balance. That's about as basic as you can get there. Um, finally we move over to the right hand side. Uh, the input gain this is quite self-explanatory. This is how much volume you want coming in. Uh, for instance, if we get this uh, little bass guitar playing, just to give you a, see the levels moving. As you can see, the input gain controls this level of the signal coming in. The gain control, which really should read output gain, is the level of the volume going back out. And it's always good practice to try and keep these two levels exactly the same. As you can see here, our output gain is slightly higher. So let's drop that down a little, see if we can get these bouncing at the same level. Mm, that's not too bad. Uh, we also have an auto switch, which again, will try to do it automatically for you, but I prefer to do it manually. Um, over here we have the mix, which uh, works as parallel compression. Uh, this is, you can take the on compressed signal, which would be 0%, and mix it in with the compressed signal. 100% is the fully compressed signal. So you can drop it down and get a bit of both. Okay, 
Nextly, we have the attack. The attack is simply how quickly the compressor starts to work. So we have our slow attack and our fast attack. Uh, the release works the same way. The release is how soon after the signal passes through the compressor and it dips below the threshold is how quickly the compressor stops. Um, that, that, that's a bit difficult to understand. But basically, this is how quickly the compressor starts to work and the release is how quickly the compressor stops working. So you can adjust the times. There's lots of uh, various ideas which suits different instruments, um, which suits different compositions. Um, if basically, there's a lot of other stuff on the internet and you can look into setting your attack and release times. Um, also, we have an auto which is quite handy if you're just getting started and you're trying to work out what attack and release do I need on this bass guitar, for instance. Uh, it's very handy indeed. Uh, down below here, we have a side chain. Now, this side chain, you need to click on as a filter. And basically what this can do is you can set the low, say for instance, 103 hertz. That means everything below 103 hertz will not be touched by the compressor. This can be handy sometimes if you find your bass guitar or your kick drum uh, is hitting the compressor too hard and it's working off your bass or off your kick and leaving the rest of your composition alone. Maybe you wanted to hit more on guitars or pianos, something like that. It's easy to engage the side chain uh, set where you want it to cut, uh, either your low or your high, and this little button underneath, listen filter, that allows you to hear what it is cutting. It's an excellent little feature, quite advanced, uh, but sometimes can be very, very useful in your mix. So I think realistically, that is about it as far as the compressor goes. Um, once you get to grips with ratio, threshold, the knee, input gain, output gain, attack and release, um, all these are very common features on a lot of compressors. And once you get to grips with what they actually do and what they actually mean, you find you'll be able to work most other compressors, even external compressors, hardware compressors. So I think that about wraps it up. Uh, thank you for listening. And welcome again to the Studio One Soapbox, and I'll catch you again in the next video. Thank you. Mm -hmm.